Great Dame Valerie Adams wins an astonishing fourth and likely last Olympic shot put medal in Tokyo. But while the sun sets on one amazing career, it rises on what could be another. And if you can't beat him, join him. Two Olympic stars opt to share gold in a rare turn of events. Welcome to Focus Sport, this is the Olympics News Wrap. Kia ora, I'm Sheree Kinnear and our medals keep ticking up. Valerie Adams became our most successful female Olympian ever, with Lisa Carrington potentially set to join her today as she begins her quest for gold. So let's take a look back on how everything unfolded on day 10. With the best throw of 19.62 metres, Dame Valerie Adams won her fourth Olympic medal in her fifth Games appearance, a bronze. But one she said actually meant more to her than any of her golds in reference to the birth of her two children since Rio. You know, in a normal world, they would have been there watching and, and it would have been, you know, great. But um, it was just awesome to, to draw that um, energy from the feeling that I was having and just imagining them up there and just knowing uh, like there goes my why and, and also wanting to make them proud. So um, it was an emotional day and a, and a very um, awesome day for me and my little family actually because you know this is my why, these two children are my why and I just hope that I've made them proud and also my family, my friends and the rest of New Zealand proud. The final also announced the arrival of future Kiwi star and 22-year-old Madison Lee Wisher, the youngest finalist who threw a personal best of 18.98 metres to finish sixth. Julia Radcliffe claimed her spot in the women's hammer final. She had the sixth best qualifying throw of 73.2 metres. Meanwhile, fellow Kiwi and first-time Olympian Lauren Bruce had a best throw of 67.71 metres and will miss the final. Elsewhere, Kiwi high jumper Hamish Kerr gave a strong account in his Olympic Games debut, jumping one centimetre below his personal best to finish 10th. Equestrian Tim Price produced a compelling cross-country ride to keep New Zealand's medal hopes alive. He sits fourth after collecting just 1.2 penalty points yesterday. The New Zealand team of Tim and Janelle Price and Jesse Campbell also sit fourth overall. 470 crew of Paul Snow Hansen and Dan Wilcox could join Peter Burling and Blair Chook and Josh Jr. in sailing's middle races after another consistent day of racing. Meanwhile, Sam Meech missed out on a medal in the men's laser. He finished 10th in the medal race and 10th overall in the class he claimed bronze in in Rio in 2016. And Micah Wilson and Erica Dawson also missed out. They finished 12th overall in the NACRA 17 class in yesterday's final qualifying races, with only the top 10 progressing. And we'll have more on the sailing later in the show with AUT's sailing professor, Mark Orams. It was a case of what might have been for Ryan Fox. The Kiwi golfer fired a final round seven under par 64, the second best score of the day, but it only improved him to share a 41st place finish. And heartbreak for Kiwi weightlifter Megan Signal. She was forced to withdraw from yesterday's women's 76 kg competition with a shoulder injury. In international news, two high jumpers agreed to share gold. Kata Mutaz Esabashim and Italy's Gianmarco Tamberi were crowned joint champions after neither were able to clear 2.39 metres and both declined to do the jump off to separate them. Heartbreak for British sprinter Zanel Hughes after he was disqualified from the men's 100 metre final for a false start. With the favourite force to sit on the sidelines, Italy's Lamont Marcel Jacobs won a shock gold. And American gymnast Simone Biles won't contest today's Olympic floor final. The four-time gold medalist had already withdrawn from the women's team, individual all-round vault and uneven bars finals to focus on her mental health. Taking a look at the medals table, the US, China, Russian Olympic Committee, Great Britain and Japan round off the top five, while New Zealand we sit there in 14th by medals total. 
And a big day set to unfold today. Lisa Carrington starts her quest for what could be a gold rush as she competes in the K1 200, K1 500 and K2 500 with Caitlin Regal. Our eventing team currently fourth overall could medal at 8 o'clock tonight. Peter Burling and Blair Chuk race for gold. Anton Down Jenkins becomes New Zealand's first male diver in 37 years to compete at the Games. And making her long-awaited appearance in Tokyo is weightlifter Laurel Hubbard, the first openly transgender athlete at the Olympics. She gets underway at 10.50 tonight. Well, as mentioned in the news, Sam Meech finished 10th yesterday in the men's laser and many of our other sailors have struggled across the board. But Peter Burling and Blair Chute could bring back home hope for the team today as they race for gold. AUT's sailing professor Mark Orams joins me. Marco, thanks so much for your time. Let's start with Sam. What do you think? What did you think of his final race and was it the performance that you expected? Oh, I, I mean, Sam Meach finished tenth overall in the Olympic Games, which, on the surface of it, is a it's a it's a really good result. Uh, but I think he'll be disappointed with that. He was the bronze medalist in Rio five years ago, and I think most significantly, his training partner is Matt Wern from Australia. And Matt Wern dominated the regatta and won the Olympic gold medal even before the last race. So Sam's benchmark will be met, and he knows that when they train together, they're dead even. Uh, and so for, for Matt to dominate the regatta and win the gold medal and Sam to kind of just struggle to fire, I think he'd be quite disappointed with that outcome. Well, if we turn our attention then to some of our other sailors, Alex Maloney and Molly Meach, they bombed out. Erica Dawson, Michael Wilkinson also out. Overall so far, how would you rate New Zealand's performance in the sailing? Did you maybe expect more from the team? Yeah, I, I, going into the regatta, uh, six in, uh, selecting only six out of the 10 classes in the sailing was a strategic move. And Yacht New Zealand made that decision quite deliberately uh, on the basis that they wanted six crews who were all capable of winning medals. I think for Micah and uh, Erica, their result of a 12th is something they can feel very proud of. Firstly, Erica broke her leg just about six weeks ago. And so for them to even make the start line was a massive achievement. They're the youngest sailors in the New Zealand team and they're the youngest sailors in their class, the NACRA 17, which is a really, if you've watched any of the racing, it is a really hairy boat to sail. For Alex and Molly, that'll be a disappointment for them uh, to end up missing the medal race after winning the silver medal in Rio. Uh, they had, I think, high hopes for themselves, uh, and this will be uh, something which they'll find really disappointing. They had a, a really bad start to the regatta. They had that uh, capsize in the first race where Molly fell off the boat when they're in a good position. Then they won the second race of the day, but they were disqualified for being over the line early and they just weren't really able to make a comeback from there. So, yeah, they'll be disappointed. Well, on a more positive note, Pete and Blair, they came back from a, a horror start themselves, but they'll race for gold today. What do they need to do out there in order to defend their title? I think they've just got to keep using the same recipe that they've been using. What's most impressive about Pete and Blair is their mental strength. They started off poorly by their standards. and Rio, they dominated from start to finish. They went into that regatta not having been beaten in, in a couple of years. They've come in differently to this regatta on a very short build-up because of all of their America's Cup commitments. And so perhaps expectedly, they started the regatta quite slowly, but they just slowly got better and better and better. They're not dominating, uh, and they're still making some mistakes, but they're not compounding those mistakes by getting frustrated. So their composure is what's really helping them. And that'll be the thing that'll get them through to the end. So I think in some ways, it's a bit of a surprise. It might seem strange to say this about the defending Olympic champions, but a bit of a surprise that they've ended up on the top of the leaderboard at this stage in the regatta. Uh, but just if they can continue to improve like they have, they're a, they're a really good shot at repeating their gold medal from five years ago in Rio. Well, thanks so much for your time, Marco. Always appreciated. Now, earlier in the Games, Hamish Bond became the first ever New Zealand athlete to claim three consecutive gold medals. But he could soon be joined by another name, Lisa Carrington. And she looked well on track to do just that when we caught up with her earlier in the year. I don't necessarily uh, like thinking, oh, this streak, I don't want to lose it. It's looking forward and figuring out how much faster can I go. I think there's always <laughs> something to get better at. Um, 
I guess it's just searching for it. You know, I've got a you know Gordy um, and other you know coaches that support us and you know being the best we can. And it comes down to what do I need to do is to be the best paddler I can. And there was a point where there's a lot of speculation around whether there would be an Olympics or you know what's the world going to be like in August 2021. For me, it just has to come down to me just doing the best I can and just pushing myself physically to be, to go on, you know, fast on the water. I guess I don't look at it like a big uh, sum of free medals or whatever. I kind of think it's more so, okay, uh, what do I want to achieve and what can I do? I would love to go there and just perform the best I can and, you know, a gold medal, uh, we'll just be able to top that off. You can watch the full video and read the full feature story as part of our 12 to watch series on the New Zealand Herald website with premium access. And while you're there, the New Zealand Herald has you covered for all the action. Stay up to date with when our New Zealanders are competing and how they're doing with our real-time Kiwi Games tracker and interactive schedule. Plus, you can catch live commentary of key events on News Talk ZB with expert analysis on the DRS and Sports Talk, as well as our daily Olympic podcast, Tokyo in 20. Well, plenty set to unfold today. Enjoy all of the action, and I'll be back tomorrow to wrap all the news and more. I'm Sheree Kinnear for Focus Sport.